Engine 12, engine 11. The tones go off 45 times a day at Littleton Fire Rescue. Structure fires, medical emergencies, traffic accidents, fire alarms, technical rescues, water emergencies, wildland fires, people trapped. Multiple calls reporting flames coming from the roof. 24-7, 365 days a year. 150 firefighters and medics protecting 220,000 residents across Arapahoe, Jefferson, and Douglas counties. For decades, Littleton Fire has had a reputation as one of the most innovative departments in Colorado and the country. Now merging with South Metro Fire Rescue, another progressive cutting-edge department. The new unified department will be the second biggest in the state. With a reputation for excellence, integrity, and getting the job done right. Second alarm on a working structure fire. And a rich history dating back to another era. In 1890, Colorado was still considered the Wild West. Saloons, horse-drawn carriages, and a new railroad. Littleton was a tiny town on the Platte River south of Denver, population 245. 24 volunteers formed the Hook and Ladder Company. They had just one ladder cart, two ladders, four hooks, and 30 water buckets. A single farmhouse burned down that year. The volunteers quickly reorganized into Littleton Hose Companies 1 and 2. Through the early 20th century, the volunteers stood watch as Littleton continued to grow. In 1951, they battled the famous Woolhurst nightclub fire. In 1959, the rough and ready flour mill, a local landmark, burned down. As a young boy, future Deputy Chief Pete Cernich was hooked, watching his father and other volunteers racing off to fight a fire. You know, when all the fire sirens went off, it was volunteer. I'd always run over there and watch the, the volunteers come in and the rigs go out, and it was pretty exciting. Then, in 1960, with a population of 13,000, this small Colorado city decided its citizens needed round-the-clock protection. Professional firefighters began staffing Stations 1 and 2. Many of those volunteers became paid firefighters. And I think they brought with them a lot of the history in Littleton, because they all, most of them, grew up here. And that just continued on when they became a paid department. Um, to bring the best of yourself to the community, to serve the community. They were put to the test in 1965 with one of Colorado's worst natural disasters, the Platte River Flood. A 15-foot wall of water tore through Littleton and Denver. 28 people lost their lives. By 1970, Littleton's population had doubled again. Two fire stations weren't enough to cover one of Denver's fastest growing suburbs. The city and Littleton Fire Protection District added Station 3 in Jefferson County and Station 4 in Arapahoe County. Then a decision that would forever change the department's core mission and identity. Littleton became the first fire department in Colorado and among the first in the country to add paramedics. A bunch of us started the, pr the program on our own time without a conversation. It was Pete Cernich, then on Rescue Squad 1, who pushed for more medical training after watching his own father die of a heart attack on the job. Squad 51, man with abdominal pain. The hit TV show Emergency about Los Angeles County paramedics convinced Littleton's new chief, himself from California, to start a paramedic program here. Pete Cernich traveled to LA to watch and learn. Then, in 1974, he was in the first class of paramedics to graduate from Swedish Hospital. We put three units in service. Five weeks later, we had our first cardiac save. We had a patient that cardiac arrest. The guys, the closest station, 12, started CPR on him. The, the, the rescue squad got there. They shocked him. They did anyway. He was discharged from the hospital eight days later with no no impairment. It would be the first of many saves. Littleton quickly became a department known for its commitment to emergency medicine. Medicine is really at the core of what we do at Littleton Fire. We're definitely the trend centers. We were focused on having paramedic units, paramedic rescues that ran on every call, that were uh, cross-trained with firefighter and paramedic skills. So we really valued it as, as, as an important part of our uh, service to the community. Today, 70% of Littleton's calls are medical. 
Every medic unit and engine carries paramedics and their life-saving equipment and drugs. Paramedic Captain Tyler Turley. For us, lives are everything. You know, we are, we are here to protect lives, and the next thing would be property conservation. But when we get a call for help, you immediately start to run through the factors that are going to affect us. How quickly can we get there, and how will that time work against us by the time we're there? Engineer medic Marissa Getman. When the bell goes off, um, I think my, my, my protocols come to mind. I know that there's going to be three or four, five medics that are going to be on this call, and I'm not alone. I know that every last person here in this department is aware of what their job is, what's expected of them. It's a choreography. We, as medics, on the medic, I feel like really have our, uh, our plan down. I definitely feel very lucky to have survived. In 2009, Jordan Meyer was just 19 and a triathlete training in the pool at the Goodson Rec Center when he suddenly went into cardiac arrest in the water. Lifeguards and an off-duty nurse began CPR and used an automatic defibrillator. Within minutes, Littleton paramedics were on the scene. It was definitely life or death. So my heart had completely stopped and basically I wasn't getting any blood to my brain, to my main organs. And that's the point where CPR is life-saving, especially when you're out of the hospital, the odds of surviving that are less than 5%. Paramedics used new automated CPR technology and defibrillated Jordan three more times on the way to the hospital, where doctors dropped his body temperature to save his life. It worked. Today, Jordan is Dr. Jordan Meyer, a surgeon in Kansas City. I'd like to say to the paramedics who responded that day, thank you so much for the work that you were doing. Uh, you truly saved my life and so many others like me, and I'm just so grateful that you continue to do the great work that you do. It's not just outstanding paramedicine that Littleton is known for. There have been many other firsts. The first department to put Opticoms on its trucks, turning traffic lights green so responding units don't have to run red lights. The first in Colorado to use the jaws of life for extricating victims of car accidents. And the first department in the entire country to use five-inch hose lines originally imported from Germany. What that means is it's a larger diameter hose that allows us to flow more, more water through our fire pumps to put, it on the, to put on the houses. For a small department with a limited arsenal of pumpers, the five inch lines essentially created above ground water mains to drown a fire. Denver native Roland Sino rose through the ranks from dispatcher to firefighter to paramedic to captain to division chief. The majority of guys didn't want to just sit back on their laurels and let other departments throughout the, the country and, and in, in the metro area uh, leave them in, in the dust. Along the way, the men and women of Littleton Fire have also been on the front lines of history and tragedy. In 1997, firefighters radioed for an air life chopper to a fatal car crash on Santa Fe Boulevard. Lifting off from the scene, the helicopter hit power lines and went down. The pilot, two nurses, and a patient were killed. In 1999, 12 students and a teacher were murdered at Columbine High School, among the nation's earliest mass shootings. In 2003, the Cherokee Ranch Fire forced 3,000 residents to flee their homes. A few years later, a 205-acre fire in Douglas County's backcountry wilderness area forced 850 to evacuate. In 2013, Littleton's water rescue team responded to the devastating floods in Boulder, rescuing dozens of people. That same year, 2013, another student was shot and killed, this time at Arapahoe High School. In 2017, Douglas County Sheriff's Deputy Zach Parrish was killed, four officers wounded in an unprovoked ambush. Littleton paramedics were on the scene. In 2018, a fire at a six-story apartment complex for seniors triggered a mass casualty incident in downtown Littleton, the second major fire at that complex in just two years. One resident was killed, 13 rushed to area hospitals. I think everybody takes a lot of baggage home. I know I do, I know everyone else does as well. Um, but the family that we have here to deal with that and to um, debrief that when we get back, this department is not like any other department. It is so special, that family that we have bred since 1890 here, you won't find that anywhere else. It's the people that we hire. Um, we hire good people. And um, I feel like we hire people who want that family aspect, who want to take care of people. Today, Littleton is nine stations strong, 
seven engines, two ladder trucks, seven medic units, two brush trucks, two battalion chiefs, water rescue and hazmat teams. A dispatch agreement with other departments in the 1980s meant Station 1 became 11, Station 2 became 12, and so on. Another Littleton Fire Protection District Station, number 15, opened in 1979. In 1986, one of the fastest growing communities in the country, Highlands Ranch Metro District, contracted with Littleton for service. A single mini pumper was stationed alongside a trailer in open grassland overlooking Denver. Over the following decades, Littleton grew larger, adding Station 16, 17, and 18. In 2016, the newest station in the Trailmark community near Chatfield State Park, Station 19 would be the last firehouse built under the Littleton Fire Rescue namesake. The department is now more than a century removed from its founding, million dollar apparatus, extensive training, and the latest research on the science of fire. Today's fires burn hotter and faster, very often spewing toxic soot from synthetics and plastics that can be just as dangerous to firefighters as the fire itself. I think we've all had to raise our game, is the bottom line. The type of structures that we have and the fuels or the things inside the house have changed dramatically. Our buildings and our houses don't have the structural supports that they did uh, 15 years ago. It's all about attention to detail. Attention to detail matters because that small detail means the difference between you walking in to a room that's ready to flash or you walking through a floor that's not safe. We will be calculated on the risk we will take to save property. However, we will take a lot of risk always to save lives, whether it's go in through the window, um, take people out a window, uh, however we need to do that, we will, we will do that. If, if we get a call for um, a structure with somebody that's inside or a, an unknown if somebody's inside, um, you will have massive amounts of people in searching, looking for possible victims or, or uh, known victims. We took that oath that we will go in and we will do this. An oath and dedication to excellence. We hire some of the brightest, youngest men and women you can see around the country. Our last hiring, we had half of the people had bachelor's degrees and a third of those had master's degrees as well. We get some really good people and we've been able to see the benefit of that in our community. Pride runs deep here. After 31 years, Pete Cernich, who built Littleton's paramedic program, retired as a deputy chief. The worst day on our job is better than the best on almost every other job that I can think of. Whether you save their house or even part of a house when it's on fire or whether, whether you dig them out of an automobile or whatever, it's just the reward of knowing that you contributed to them. Roland Sino retired after 41 years. I had the best job with the best department in the world. Littleton Fire Rescue. Now, this department with a rich history and traditions dating back to 1890 is joining forces with neighboring South Metro Fire Rescue. They already know each other well. They've been training together and coming to each other's aid for decades, even sharing a common dispatch. We have a large header from the joint. Engine 39, engine 46. Medic 41, Medic 42, Brush 42, Engine 37, 34, Battalion Chief 41, Battalion Chief 34, Wildland Interface Fire, Map Page W 37, Engine 12,690. And South Metro itself is the product of decades of growth in Denver's southern suburbs, formed over the years by mergers including Castlewood Fire Department, Cherry Hills, North Douglas County. Castle Pines, Leveres, Parker, and most recently Cunningham Fire Rescue. Every department bringing their own rich histories and traditions. With Littleton on the team, 30 South Metro fire stations and 550 firefighters will protect 300 square miles and 540,000 residents. Whether it's a medical, a fire, a car crash or something, we will bring more resources sooner for our community second only in size to Denver Fire. When you call 911, you're going to receive the best service, I truly believe, west of the Mississippi and in the country. We're merging with South Metro is a great thing. We built sustainability for the individuals in the fire department. We were building sustainability for the communities. We are going to provide the highest level of paramedicine, highest level of paramedic firefighting, special teams from hazmat teams to dive teams to wildland teams to heavy rescue teams. We will be a full service, self-sustaining fire department, which is, is really, really honorable and 
really a great opportunity for our community. Standing here on the steps of the courthouse adjacent to Main Street in Littleton, I'm reminded of the rich history in the city of Littleton. Part of that rich history dates back to 1890 when Littleton Fire Rescue was formed. And part of Littleton Fire Rescue's history is a history of innovation and service to its citizens, taking care of the citizens in the city like family. That resonates with me as the Fire Chief of South Metro Fire Rescue as I welcome 160 new men and women into our family because that's exactly our lodestar for taking care of our community, taking care of you like family. My father was a firefighter and my son Robert is a firefighter, so in our family we have three generations in the fire service taking care of people. It's exciting to me to be part of an organization that date, dates back more than 100 years and I look forward to the future and continuing on that service of care, compassion and competence in your community.